Hello. I continue to acquaint you with the radio communication equipment of past years. This time I'll talk about the Lafayette Dynacom 3C Citizen Band portable radio of the 70s. In general, Lafayette is an American seller and manufacturer of electronics and radio communication equipment, but these radios were made in Japan specifically for Lafayette. And so, the Dynacom 3C radios were produced in the 70s, specifically these two copies were made in 1979. These radios are designed exclusively for radio communications in the Citizen 27 MHz band, have three fixed channels, three fixed frequencies. Frequencies are set by quartz resonators. These radios work in amplitude modulation. The receiver is of the whole superheterodyne type with one frequency conversion and an intermediate frequency of 455 kHz. The citizen band, we can say that these are household appliances, and these radios were produced for use in everyday life. The body is quite large and heavy. At the same time, it consists of two halves, the front part and the back cover. Both of these parts are metal, quite durable. The back cover is fixed with one single screw in the center, and we unscrew this screw in order to remove the back cover. And we will see the internal organization and also there will be a battery compartment. Batteries used are ordinary household ones, because the radio is household. The radio is powered by 12 to 14 volts. To get such a voltage, you need to use 10 batteries of size AA. The connector for connecting the power supply inside the radio case is the same as for 9V batteries, but an adapter is included with the radio in order to install 10 AA cells into this adapter and use this connector to connect the adapter to the radio. The power is turned on with the volume control combined with the power switch. On the front side of the radio, in addition to this regulator, there is a squelch threshold control. Also, an external power source can be connected to the radio, there is a connector for connection on the sidewall, and a charger can even be connected if you use accumulator instead of batteries. The antenna of the radio is telescopic built-in non-removable. It has a fairly long length, it definitely won't fit into the frame with me. Approximately one and a half meters telescope, at the base is quite strong. It does not rotate in any way, does not bend anywhere, but is rigidly built into the radio body. Since the antenna is one and a half meters short for the 27 megahertz band, Naturally some kind of matching device is used inside in the form of an extension coil. There is also a 3.5 mm jack for connecting an external antenna on the case. So, household appliances in the antenna connector are also very household, 3.5 mm. And there is also a 3.5 mm jack for connecting headphones or an external speaker. An external microphone can also be connected to the radio. It connects to the 4-pin GX16 connector on the top of the case, and in order to use this microphone there is a switch that selects which microphone we will use now, built-in or external. In the radio case, of course, there is a loudspeaker. There is a grill for it on the front side of the radio case. And the same loudspeaker is also used as a microphone, so the sound will be quite booming. There is no separate microphone in the radio. The loudspeaker is used high impedance, not with a resistance of 4 or 8 ohms, but with a resistance of as much as 100 ohms. Such a speaker works more effectively as a microphone. There is a button or key for turning on the PTT on the sidewall. Quite large and comfortable. There is also a small three-position ABC switch. This channel switch is also on the sidewall, a small inconspicuous switch, although it can be said that this is a very important switch. Here are almost all the controls for this radio. The only other thing is the small dial indicator is very beautiful. In the receive mode, it shows the signal level, or rather, it shows the voltage of automatic gain control. In the transmit mode, it shows the voltage from the RF detector that is connected to the antenna, that is, the transmitter's output stage is working and actually the entire transmitter. Although the loudspeaker is installed in the radio case is small, but it sounds very loud. Now I'll open the squelch and turn up the volume. Sounds very loud. The noise level is high because I am in a room and there are a lot of different digital equipment working here. Somewhere in the open field, the noise will be a little less, since the radio works in amplitude modulation and not in frequency modulation, it will not constantly make noise at full volume. But of course there is a squelch in order not to listen to this noise.
the loudspeaker is rated at 0.2 watts. Then, in the 70s, the power on the speakers was still indicated by engineers and not marketers, so the power is written real 0.2 watts. In our time, speakers could write 10 watts on this. The case of the radio is of course very beautiful, metal, durable, it is pleasant to hold it in the hands. But it is very heavy, and with the extended antenna one and a half meters long, I can't even imagine how it could be used. It is generally impossible indoors, you immediately touch something with this antenna. But indoors, communication at 27 megahertz with a portable radio is almost impossible, so it's probably more intended for use in open spaces. But in general, anyway, the convenience of using such a technique is doubtful. But at that time it was probably difficult to do it differently at 27 megahertz. Прием. Отлично, как там? <laughs> все хорошо. Алексей Александрович, вы там где? У меня все готово, я вас жду. Мчусь к тебе, любимая. Давай поскорее. For these radios, there is also such a case or holster, it is very durable for these radio models, it was designed. The radio is installed in it in this way, it snaps into two latches. There are corresponding cutouts on this holster for each control and connector, and on the back there is also a place for attaching to a belt. Although, of course, I can hardly imagine how this radio can be worn on a belt on trousers. Probably all the same it is for fastening somewhere else. I will say a few words about the circuitry and design of this radio. The radio is exclusively domestic, 27 MHz citizen band, and therefore the entire assembly on a printed circuit board, in general, the entire design of the radio is no different from any other household appliances of the 70s, some kind of radio receivers or tape recorders, including our domestic production. Ordinary parts are installed on the printed circuit board on one side, no part is fixed with anything, neither with glue, nor with varnish, nor with some kind of mechanical fixator, it is simply soldered and rests on its pins. Electrolytic capacitors are soldered so that they stand on the terminals, and are not held by the case against the board but is located on its own pins, which, in general, reduces reliability. But despite this radio, even two copies, have survived to our time in excellent good condition. The only thing is that the contacts of the receive transmit switch were very oxidized, and it was practically inoperable. I had to clean these contacts. As I said, according to the scheme, the receiver is a superheterodyne with one conversion. Radio 3 channel, in order for it to work on each channel, you need to install two quartz. One for the transmitter and one for the receiver. Accordingly, for three channels you need three pairs of quartz, six quartz. The radio was usually sold with one quartz installed, or rather with one pair of quartz for one channel. And in particular, these two radios were sold with quartz installed in them on channel 15, frequency 27.135, and the other two channels were free. And in the free connectors for quartz, the owner of the radio could purchase quartz separately for the channels of interest to him, naturally, not far in frequency from the main channel, and install these quartz on his own. For each channel, a pair of quartz for the transmitter and for the receiver, a frequency below the transmitter frequency by the value of the intermediate frequency. For example, on channel 15, a quartz for the transmitter is set to 27.135, for a receiver 26.680. One intermediate frequency of 455 kHz for such a high frequency range as 27 MHz is a very simplified circuit design. It means that the reception on the mirror channel in this radio is, of course, very strong, and nothing can be done about it. But household appliances, so such a simplified circuitry, one intermediate frequency. As a low-frequency amplifier the receiver uses a classic of the time push-pull transformer amplifier, which also has a smaller pre-transformer than the output one. Two transformers, between them a push-pull cascade on two transistors in the T92 package. A metal radiator is also attached to this case to cool each transistor. And the same low-frequency amplifier, when the radio is in transmission mode, is used as a modulator, which is connected in series to the power circuit of the transmitter output stage. But the output RF stage is assembled on a transistor already in the 220 package, the power of the radio is 3 watts. We will not measure it, since there is no normal high-frequency connector on the radio case, there is only a built-in antenna and a 3.5 mm connector. 
There are loops on the case for attaching some kind of carrying strap, so it was possible to carry this radio on a strap over the shoulder in an open form and in a case, since the case provides that the loops for attaching the strap remain free and open. Let's listen to how the signal of this radio sounds on the air. Let me remind you that it works in amplitude modulation, so there may be a noticeable multiplicative background. The signal from the radio will be received by the FT847 transceiver on my desk, and you will hear an audio from its line output. Here is such a booming modulation from the loudspeaker. What are my thoughts on these radios? Firstly, apparently then in 70, the manufacturer did not consider that a metal case for a consumer radio was unreasonably expensive. Secondly, people did not consider that such a huge body and a one and a half meter telescopic antenna were something shamefully uncomfortable and ugly, and so on. Used these radios. If communication was needed, please use such radios. Now, many people at the word radio communication, the radio frowns and says this is something from the past, as if in the past people were worse than now. And at the mention of shortwave radio communications, where the antenna needs to be deployed, they say, I'll deploy the antenna or something, I'd rather die than deploy the antenna. Oh please. The next, third thing I would like to say. It's funny that 10 finger cells are used in a cage that connects with a connector like on a 9 volt battery. I remember that in those 70s 80s, in our receivers, use the same clip, but only for 6 batteries, to power 9V household broadcast receivers. And here is a clip for 10 AA batteries. The next point is, I want to draw your attention once again to the fact that the superheterodyne with one frequency conversion, and the intermediate frequency is low, 455 kHz in the 27 MHz band is not a working option at all, because the mirror channel will be received almost the same as the main one channel. That is, the attenuation in the mirror channel will be 15 decibels at best, and if 20, then this is very good. But in general, let me remind you that the norm is probably 60 decibels, or more. That is, household appliances, therefore, circuitry is simplified, one intermediate frequency, and that is very low. And about the quality of the signal in the transmission mode. Of course, a loudspeaker that works as a microphone, especially in such a resonant and ringing metal case, I would say sounds very bad. Apparently then in the 70s it was difficult with microphones and small electric microphones were not available. Although they seem to be. In general, I don't know why it was the loudspeaker that was used here as a microphone. So the sound in the transmission mode turns out to be so booming. At that time, in our domestic radios, of course, not of a citizen band, but used in some services, loudspeakers were also used as microphones, in an external microphone, and also, in general, the sound was mumbling. No worse, no better just about the same. The body of the radio, in my opinion, looks very beautiful, during the development this was clearly paid attention to, and the loudspeaker grill, and the volume and squelch control knobs, and in general the whole body, somehow everything is done in this way, taking into account the fact that this is a household item, and a person it should be a pleasure to use it in everyday life. This is not a professional technique, where a professional is simply busy with his profession, but he still has a radio, and this is precisely a household thing, and the user will use this thing to receive aesthetic pleasure from the beauty of the device itself. This also probably includes a miniature dial indicator, which by and large is not really needed, but it's more beautiful with him. It was interesting to study such radios with you. To tell the truth, I had never met them before. It's nice that they have survived to this day in such excellent condition, with virtually no damage, scratches, and even in working order, with the exception of the receive transmit switch, which is multi-contact and has two switching groups, one of which, as usual, switches the loudspeaker in CB radio. Well, in general, this switch, of course, did not reach our time in good condition, but after cleaning it, it turned out that the rest of the circuit works fine. Of course, you can use these radios in our time, the 27 MHz channel frequency grid is no different, and you can connect from such a radio with a modern car radio at 27 MHz on channel 15. Well, of course, in our time there are much more convenient small-sized radios, LPD, PMR bands, and amateur radio bands, and just a professional VHF band, which, in addition to being smaller, 
much lighter, are much more convenient and do not have such a huge antenna, they are also, let's say, more long range, since 27 MHz is probably the most inappropriate band for radio communication in a portable version. It is for the radio that we hold in our hand. Although, of course, a 1.5 meter antenna somehow compensates for this a little. And probably if there was a 15 cm helical antenna here, the connection would be very bad. With such a 1.5 meter antenna, you can somehow contact. That's all. Thanks for watching this video. Use radio communications, both in ordinary life and in business. Radio communication is generally a useful thing. You see, people used such huge uncomfortable radios with one and a half meter antennas and nothing. And now much more convenient and functional radios are available. Alexei Igonin was here, by everyone.